we are very fortunate to, we actually are starting now a series of talk on formal verification. And the, the first uh, public talk is given by Leonardo de Mura for Microsoft Research. We are very fortunate to have Leo. Leo is actually one of the most originate, original person in, the, in this field, starting at Yikes, then actually building Z3 and trying to actually competing very hard with between Z3 and Yikes. Uh, eventually, I guess Z3, uh, actually in Satoa, we still use Yikes occasionally. And uh, now working on Lean, which is uh, one of the most uh, interesting and novel interactive term prover in this domain. And I think uh, Leo, it's a, it's a basic talk, right? Because we have a lot of uh, people here with, with a basic knowledge in this field. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Thank, thank, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, ha very happy to be here. I'm going to talk today about Lean 4. I feel free to interrupt me. I, I will try to make it very interactive. Uh, I'm also going to uh, show you many links to, to where you can find more information about Lean. Right. Uh, I'm going to start with a small introduction. We view Lean as a platform for software verification, formal mathematics, and a platform for developing custom automation in domain-specific languages. The goals of the project is uh, we want a system that is very extensible, has expressive logic behind it, is scalable, proofs are stable, and is also efficient programming language. Right? Lean is based on dependence type theory. I will show you later what does what is that supposed to mean. But there are many, I think one important thing about Lean that we have a lot of resources available online. Right? So we have the websites. Uh, we have a manual to improving Lean. That's memo, many, it, it, it has been evolving over the years. I mean, but it started as lecture notes of a course uh, uh, at CBU in 2015, but it has been ported to the latest version and it's a great source of information. We also have a book now uh, for people that want to use Lean as a programming language. It's called Function Programming Lean. It's being written by David Christiansen uh, David is the director of the Haskell Foundation, an expert in functional programming, dependence type theory, and he's writing this book. It's available online. Uh, new chapters, are, uh, we have new chapters every month. Uh, and it's really, the background here is if you know how to program, this is going to show you how to program in Lean. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also Lean manual that's in progress, but has a lot of useful information. The Lean Zulip chat is where the community gathers. I, I will show you the chat. It's unbelievable, right? People are super uh, responsive there. You can ask questions there. You're going to get answers in minutes, right? There's a big community. There are like 20, more than 20,000 messages per week. There are more than 1 million messages read in this chat room. And you're going to find all sorts of people, right? Computer scientists, mathematicians, people working on AI, right? For mathematics, you're going to find many uh, very diverse crowds there. We have the MathLib 4, right? MathLib is the mathematical library for, uh, for Lean. We have many useful links in this page. And we also have a link to the community website that's maintained by the community. Right, so you're going to find a lot of documentation there. The Lean Mathematical Library is a community effort, right? It's a unified library for mathematics, and it's growing beyond our dreams, right? It starts in 2017, you can see the growth, right? It's more than 1 million lines of mathematics now, and it's the foundation for much more complex projects that have been done using Lean has more than 100,000 theorems there, and it's built by a community of mathematicians, computer scientists, students. Uh, it was a big surprise. I mean, when we start Lean, we never imagined that one day we would have a library like that. Uh, and the project has momentum now, right? Uh, we had articles in many popular science magazines talking about Lean, 
like in Wired, I have here one of these articles in the Wired magazine. Lean also shows up in Quanta in 2020. In 2021, it was selected as one of the biggest breakthroughs in math and computer science. Uh, recently, uh, the project was completed this year. Uh, but the liquid tensor experiment showed up in Nature, in an article in Nature, is because uh, uh, the project started by a challenge posed by a Fields medalist, Peter Shosey. He had a new result, he was not sure about it. People were assuming it's true because he has a Fields medal. And he challenged the formal mathematics community to formalize re his results. The Lean community tried to do it, we thought it would take uh, years to do it, but people managed to do it in months. The, the part of the proof he wasn't sure about, people did it in months, right? The, it's like this math hive of people working together and managed to formalize the result he wasn't sure about in months. And more than that, after this article in Nature, they managed to simplify the proof too. And the proof is really dense. The proof was simplified by people that do not fully understand the proof. Because you have a computer there telling you if you're making mistakes or not, you can try to simplify even if you don't fully understand what you are doing, right? You can see two steps ahead, the computer is assisting you along the way. And Peter shows that was blown away by, I mean, he never imagined someone be able to simplify his proof without fully understanding it. And so, uh, this attracted many mathematicians to the community, right, these results, and also uh, uh, attracted donors, right, like Charles Hoskinson was so impressed by, by what the MathLib community was doing that he donated $20 million to create a permanent center at CMU for doing formal mathematics, right, using Lean. Uh, at Microsoft, we have the Augmented Mathematical Intelligence Project, right, uh, the mission of the project is to empower mathematicians working at cutting edge mathematics, like Peter shows in this liquid tensor. We want to support this kind of project. We also want to democratize math education, right? We believe that systems like Lean allow people to learn mathematics uh, by playing with the computer the same way many kids learn computer science by playing with an interpreter, with a compiler in their home machine, following tutorials. A system like Lean allowed them to do the same for mathematics. And we also want to support Lean as a platform for math AI research, right? Uh, there are many places that build AI assistance for Lean, right? I mean, OpenAI builds Lean GPTF. If you go to the Zulip channel, you're going to find them there. MetaAI now also built a new assistant and their assistant is, is available. Now, when you download the plugin, we're going to see the Visual Studio Code plugin for Lean. It is there, you can use their assistants, right? The AI is based on large language models, is going to keep giving you suggestions what to do next. And Microsoft is supporting the projects now with program man a program manager, engineers, contractors, and academic gifts. Uh, just to give you an idea of the Lean's Leap channel, I, I, I took some messages from there. Like here, you have a message from uh, AI researcher that's building uh, an AI assistant for Lean. You have here a message from Peter Strozzi. He has hundreds or thousands of messages there. You can engage with him there. Uh, new messages from users, new users that are trying to learn Lean and are asking basic questions in the community will help. And also you will find people celebrating new results or, or, or uh, in this particular example, the mathematician is impressed that you could use factor results automatically. He's used the, here the idea is that you can, for example, use very simple ideas. Lean, you have an algebraic hierarchy. Suppose that you prove something uh, for a field. And you can say, oh, let's see if the theorem works if you replace a field with a ring. If it still works, you generalize the result. And more than that, you can also generalize everybody that uses the result. Every single theorem that depends on this one that you generalize it can be automatically generalized. And the mathematician is pointing out, imagine 
doing that in, in informal mathematics? If you generalize the result on a paper, how do you propagate these results? But with the formal version, this can be done automatically. Uh, uh, what's new about Lean4, right? Lean4 is implemented in Lean, right? Lean3, uh, you could extend Lean using Lean itself in the community does that all the time. Mathlib has more than 1 million lines of code, but 40,000 of these lines are extensions to Lean itself. They extend Lean using the system itself. Uh, but in Lean 4, since we're implementing Lean, Lean, you can basically extend everything. You can extend the parser, the elaborator, the compiler, the tactics, the formatter. You can do, uh, you can add your own domain specific language on top of Lean, your own proof automation. You can connect Lean with external systems. You can introspect on the state of the system. And this is useful for many things. People, for example, it goes from people creating games on top of Lean, games for learning mathematics, for people that are doing AI assistance that need to collect information from the internals of the system, right? Lean has a hygienic macro system. This is, uh, the idea here is very simple. Uh, a hygienic macro system is a micro system that prevents name capture, accidental name capture. And the idea is that we want to allow, we want to make sure that simple extensions are simple to implement. That's the whole point of this system. The language server protocol is great. You can use Lean with using VS Code. That's the favorite editor of the community, but you can also use Emacs like me or VI. There are people that use, the VI editor is really sophisticated for Lean. Right, so, uh, it's as sophisticated as the VS Code one. Uh, the Lean compiler generates efficiency codes. Our runtime uses reference counting, right? If uh, the, uh, the count of an object is one, that means that it's not shared. You can, the compiler will perform destructive updates automatically for you. It implements, this approach is something we call functional, but in place, like you can do updates in place. Lean also supports low level tricks like pointer equality without compromising safety, referential transparency. It has many new algorithms like table type class resolution and address many scalability and usability issues that people had with the previous version. Uh, before I start, uh, I'm going to use this also to code, to, to, to show you examples. But before I do that, I want to show some of the links, right? We have here the, uh, our uh, main website, leanprover.github.io. Uh, you're going to find the documentation there. For instance, in the link for manual, you can see uh, setting up link that now that is very easy. Right. If you want to install Lean in your computer, if you have VS Code, it's super easy. You just install the Lean 4 extension. It, it will install everything for you, and you have a working version of Lean on your machine. If you don't have Visual Studio Code, it's available in all major platforms. It's a simple installation. You install VS Code, then you have uh, installed Lean extension. Everything is working. You can also uh, uh, install on Emacs, on uh, Vim. Uh, if you want to learn uh, how to do that, if you're having problems, you can always go to the Zulip channel, right? We have many, many uh, channels there, sub-channels. We have the general channel. We have a channel for new members that, where they can ask questions. Right, we have channels about specific Lean Four. Uh, if you want to become a developer, you can join the Lean Four Dev Channel, where you can contribute to development of the projects. You can join MathLib Four if you want to contribute to the Mathematics Library, and so on. Right, there are, uh, it's a big world. Uh, it's impossible to read all channels. For example, the new members uh, I don't follow anymore because there's so many messages there. And we really rely on the community to help us here, right? Uh, the Turing Proving Lean 4, 
this uh, uh, interactive book. You can download a PDF too, but uh, it, it's a great source of, of information. Uh, you, you can really become, uh, I think all power users in Lean started with this book. Uh, as I said, we have the functional programming Lean, that's David Christiansen is writing. Uh, we have already four chapters, but every month there's a new chapter. Uh, you can also, let's see, uh, for example, users also, you can use Lean online. You can, uh, uh, if you go to the Zulip channel, you're going to find a link, a link to the, uh, a link for uh, 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 a website that can run Lean on your web browser without even installing Lean. And you can try all examples you're going to see today, you can run on the web browser using, uh, you can find the link on the Zulip channel. The author uh, uh, is discussing there, this is fresh out of the oven, uh, this feature. So, uh, now I'm going to continue with, uh, uh, with the VS Code. Uh, let me maximize my screen. I have a series of examples showing uh, basic ideas, showing the main components in the Lean environment. Feel free to interrupt me with questions. Uh, well, you can view Lean a Lean file as a sequence of commands, right? So one commands with hash, we call them transient commands. Nobody that's writing a Lean file, uh, these transient commands are, are used to basically to introspect about Lean, to evaluate commands, check the type of a term and so on, but in a, in a file, uh, after, when you create a library using Lean, usually you don't have these hash commands that uh, we only use the hash to make clear this is a, a transient command that's not supposed to be uh, in, in the final file. But eval is a command here that executes a term, right? Uh, on the right side, you have the link for view where you're going to see the results of commands, information about the state of a proof. Here you, you are seeing the result of the this eval commands, right? The result is the string hello world, right? Basically, I'm saying uh, I'm asking Link to evaluate the, the expression that concatenates the string hello with the string space and the string worlds, right? And the result is hello world, right? Uh, you can see that you can get as you hover over objects, Lin will give you, you tell you the type of these objects, right? Uh, you can ask link to the type of a term, right? It's going to tell you in the info view that's true is a Boolean. If you hover over the Boolean, you can get a doc string about this, this uh, what a Boolean is, right? You have the, for all basic types, you have detailed doc strings. You can basically learn Lean by just hovering over these doc strings, right? Over elements you have. Uh, you can, in Lean, you can define uh, new constants. Here I'm saying that x is a natural number, that is the value 10, and they can evaluate x plus 2, and Lean is going to tell me that the result is 12, right? If I click on the eval command, I'm going to see in the info view the value 12. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, increase a little bit the font size, if it helps. Uh, Again, you can define functions. For example, I'm declaring here the function double that takes an integer x and returns two times x, right? I, again, we, we, you see that uh, the, the doc strings are explaining things. If I hover over the times, it's saying that a times b computes the product of a and b. Uh, it, it tells us the meaning of this notation is type dependence, right? Here I'm using the times for, for integers, but you can do that. You have the times is an overloaded symbol. You can use for natural numbers, reals, rationals. You can define for your own type what times means. And in the eval commands, we can execute the eval commands saying double. What's the result of double three? We get it's six, right, in the info view. I can ask the type of double. You see that the type of double is a function from an integer to an integer, right? 
And we can now prove our first theorem. Right? The command example uh, basically is a definition without a name, is a transient definition. It's like a theorem that we're using just for testing. And I'm saying, okay, I want to prove the double four equals eight. And we prove using reflexivity. You may say, well, well, uh, reflexivity is a, you prove that's A equals A. Why can we prove double four equals eight by reflexivity? It's because uh, it, reflexivity means more powerful than it seems at first sight. If Lincoln reduce this term here, the left-hand side and the right-hand side to the same term, you can prove it by reflexivity. In this case is if we execute double four, link will reduce it to eight in eight equals eight. That's why you can prove by reflexivity. Uh, let's show just how we can add here. You can add inputs. Let's put it here. I, I put my string, my box string, box strings use this slash dash dash. Right, and I wrote my own message here, double the inputs value x. Now, if I hover over double, I get my doc string there, right? Okay, these are uh, I basically here showing that's how you have a, uh, I show the basic commands, eval and check, how to define new constants and how to prove a very basic term using reflexivity. And showing the reflexivity name is more powerful than it seems, right? Because it's modular reduction. If you, you can reduce two terms to the same term, you can prove them using reflexivity name. Let's see the second example, right? Uh, the second example is that we, 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 is we're trying to make the point here that functions are first class objects in Lean. For example, you can have a function called twice that takes a function f from net to net in a, in a natural number a, and I'm going to apply f twice to a, right? Basically, twice is a function that gets the function as an argument. You can ask the type of check of twice, and I'm going to see that's a function. It takes the first argument as a function from net to net. The second argument is a natural number and the result is a natural number. And now we can ask what's, uh, let, let's execute twice, but given as an argument, a function act that takes an X and return X plus two. Like uh, and this is how you write an anonymous function in Lean, right? A lambda also in other programming languages. And the second argument is 10. Basically I'm asking I'm executing here the function plus two twice, and the result should be 14, as it is shown here in the info view, right? Again, we, we can prove this very simple theorem. Uh, here I'm using the command theorem. That's I'm saying the name of this theorem is twice add two, right? And uh, this theorem has a parameter, a, and I'm proving that if I, uh, I get, I have a value A and execute X plus two twice, this is equal to A plus four, right? And again, we can prove that by reflexivity, right? Uh, he is basically saying that the reduction here is not just for concrete values, but can link and do partial evaluation too, right? If we reduce this side, Lean will reduce this side to A plus four. And it's going to prove, you can prove that by reflexivity again. Uh, uh, Lean has syntax sugars like other programming languages for writing anonymous functions. Uh, this is very similar to what you find in Haskell. You can use this dot notation. You say dot plus two in parentheses is a, a shorthand for fun x arrow x plus two, right? Uh, you can also change a little bit. Let, let's, uh, let's uh, if I do, I'm subtracting uh, two twice, I get six, right? Uh, you may ask, how do I get this, uh, this character that's not ASCII character, right? You see there's a center dot. 
but Lean tells you if you hover over any Unicode character in Lean, VS Code will tell you how to input the character, right? He's saying, oh, you can use slash dots, right? Let me try here, show you slash, if I put slash dots, you see that it converted to the center dots, right? This is very handy and you can, uh, the community makes heavy use of Unicode characters. If you start browsing the li mathematical library, you're going to find many Unicode symbols there. And, but you can hover over them and VS Code will tell you how to input any Unicode symbol. Uh, let's go to the next example. Here we're going to start with uh, uh, a very simple kind of index data type that is a enumeration type. I'm going to declare a new type saying that's called weekday. And it has seven different possible values. It can be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on, right? <clears throat> this is what is called in many other programming languages. This is what we call a enumeration type. Basically, it's a type that has seven possible values, right? And when you declare this kind of type in Lean, Lean will automatically declare the constants weekday, that is a type, right? And declare weekday.sunday, weekday.monday, and so on. They are, their types are weekday. You, for example, you can use the command check to check that weekday Sunday is a weekday. Uh, you can open the namespace weekday, and now you can just write Sunday. Uh, 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 and you can now write uh, uh, simple functions, right? For example, here we're going to write a function by pattern matching that converts a weekday to a natural number. For example, I'm going to match on D that has type weekday and say, if it's Sunday, I'm going to return one, if it's Monday, I'm going to return two, and so on, right? We can also write a function called weekday.next that's giving a weekday who is going to return the next day of the week, like Sunday, the next day is Monday, Monday is Tuesday, and so on, right? Again, by pattern matching. And we can do the same thing for the previous day of the week. And here we are using a... a, a uh, Lee has many, uh, a lot of syntax sugar. This is the first one, right? This pattern here where you have a variable and you immediately match on this variable is so common that many users use the shorthand, right? Instead of writing, giving a name to the variable and then immediately writing match G with, right? You can just write the... Uh, the, the cases directly, right? You see that we don't have here the match commands. It's just a shortcut, right? But it's exactly the same style. It's just a way to make your definitions more compact. Now let's see how can you prove that the, uh, the, if we take the next day and then the previous day, we go back to the original day, right? Uh, here, Lin, we are using uh, this uh, notation g.next, right? This is just shorthand for writing next g. Let me We could write like taking, I'm taking the next day of G and then take the previous. That's dot notation is just to make things more convenient. It has a flavor like object oriented programming language flavor where you can find methods, right? Uh, you can always do that. Uh, the dot notation working as follows. We know that G has type weekday. When you write G dot next, we look for a definition called weekday.next, right, in your environment. If it's there, then converts it to this regular application, right? It's just a convenient way to write things and is extensively used by the community. Uh, 
how we prove that, right? Uh, one way is doing the following, right? Uh, before I try uh, this proof here, let me first comment the, the proof that works. You may say, let's try to prove by reflexivity like we proved the previous examples, right? But here Lin fails, right? He says that this, uh, uh, the Bethel has this type, and it, but is expected to have this type here, right? There's a type mismatch. You may think, why, why the proof didn't work? It's because the partial evaluation that I described before gets stuck. Right, we don't know what G is. Right, G can be Sunday, can be Monday. We don't know. There's no way to continue the evaluation. It gets stuck at the match. Right, uh, and how do we do, do we handle this kind of proof? In Lean, usually, we do we do by by case analysis. Right, we say okay, let's case do a case analysis. In G, G can be Sunday, can be Monday, and so on, right? It can be one of the seven possible cases. And the same commands match, right, that we use it for defining the function weekday, you can use to, to write a proof by cases, right? Here I'm doing a definition by cases, right? Here we are doing a proof by cases. And each case is approved by reflexivity. Now that you know that G in this branch here, G is Sunday, right? And now when you try to reduce Sunday, next of Sunday is Monday, and the previous of, uh, uh, of Monday is Sunday, right? And so you get Sunday again, Sunday equals Sunday is by reflexivity. And you can do that for each case and the proof will be working every single case. Uh, for example, let, let's change the definition of previous here to Sunday. You're going to see now that you get an error here. This case doesn't work anymore, right? Uh, let's go back to Monday here and our proof works again. This is very tedious. Right, no, uh, for long proofs, nobody writes like that unless they want to, for educational purposes, they want to write proofs like that. In Lean, we have tactics. Tactics can be viewed as a form of proof automation. And one basic tactic we have is called cases to perform case analysis, and it will create seven different goals, right? So you can see the state of the proof on the info view. Basically, after, uh, uh, let, let me show you the four cases, you can see the state of our proof. We have a G that's a weekday, and we want to prove these facts here, that the previous of next G equals G. Then I'm going to apply this, I'm going to say I want to do a proof by cases. And now we have seven different cases, right? And we prove them by reflexivity. It's still very verbose, but in Lean we can we have you can use combinators, you can use more sophisticated proof automation. But here I'm going to show you a, a simple combinator. That's the, uh, this one here, the less than semicolon greater than. If you hover this combinator, it's going to tell you that it applies the first static tag, and then for each sub goal it applies tag prime, right? Uh, and now the proof is way more compact, right? So you just say, uh, do cases. I, I want a proof by cases on G and apply reflexivity to each sub goal. And you see that in one, with one liner, we get all goals. The proof was completed. So we get this message here, goals accomplished, right? This is just a small example. We're going to see that Lean has much more powerful proof automation later today. But just to sh show you uh, the main ingredients here, we have this static framework where you, you can define your own proof automation. The community writes their own automation that they can use here. You can inspect the state of a proof. Uh, one cool thing here is that you can get, uh, 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 you can click on objects and get, for example, if you click on Sunday, it tells you that Sunday is a week. The, the type of Sunday is weekday. And when you are 
Manipulating complex proofs. This is really important. You can zoom in in any term in your proof, right? And get more information about this term. <coughs> uh, what's the type? One recurrent question we get in Lean is that you, you probably already seen that uh, types and, and terms they have the same status in Lean. In, this is indeed the case. For example, you can ask what the type of zero is. Lean is going to tell you it's a natural number. Then you ask, what's the type of a natural number? It's going to tell you that's type with a, a, a uppercase T. Then you say, whoa, what's the type of type? And Lean is going to tell you that's type one. It's a bigger uh, type. And then you say, what's the type of type one? And Lee is going to tell you it's type two. And you have a hierarchy of types, right? And uh, you may ask, what's the type of EQ raffle two? Uh, EQ raffle is just a, a more verbose version of the raffle term we've seen before. Basically here, we're saying, what's the type of EQ raffle two? Is the type is two equals two. In lean propositions are types, right? And so you can ask, what's the type of two equals two now? Lean is going to tell you it is a proposition. And you may ask, what's the type of prop? And the type of prop is type. And so the message is here. Uh, the message I'm trying to communicate in these slides that you have terms like zero, they have types. A natural number is the type of zero, but then the, the type of a type is also a type. In this case, is this uppercase type, and they themselves are types. Proofs are terms, right? EQ raffle two is a term. Its type is two equals two, and it's a proposition. And propositions are also types in game, right? That's the, uh, one thing that's important to keep in mind. Many times people forget about that. I mean, many mathematicians when they are using it to prove very abstract terms, they don't care about this kind, they can forget about this kind of detail, but it's something that is important to have in the back of your mind. And uh, one important thing, why it's important to remember that terms, proofs are terms and propositions are types, is because everything, any tool that you have for, the, for creating definitions programs also can also be used to write proofs, right? It's like here, we use this pattern matching to define a function weekday next, but we can also use the same pattern matching, the same match to write a proof, right? And this is sometimes really, really handy, right? Uh, uh, <coughs> sometimes we as in lean sophisticated automation for writing recursive functions, and you can use the same automation to write mutually recursive theorems, for example, right? But let's continue. Lean has a notion of implicit arguments. I will try to, to explain what it is. We have seen that uh, 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 in, in Lean, uh, a function can take types as parameters. Sort here is, uh, uh, we have seen that we have types and propositions. Sort is, is a lot, you can view as an umbrella. It covers, you can, here it can be both a proposition you can pass there as a type like next or type. So Leo, sort, there's a question. Is it is it okay if we ask questions now? Yes, yes, please. So there's a question uh, in the channel, in the chat that says, uh, do tactics like Ruffle also have types? Uh, the tactics, this is an excellent question. The, the tactics we write, they do, they do have types. Uh, uh, we are going to see later when you're writing the proof automation in Lean, we are going to have a, a monadic hierarchy. And usually the tactics are going to, our tactics live in a monad called tactic M. Uh, the tactic you can view as a meta program, right? The meta program is a program that creates programs or proofs, right? And, and all our tactics live in this monadic uh, setting. Uh, 
is they have a, a like impressive film where you can you have commands to tell Lean to do things like, oh, I want to rewrite this term, I want to simplify the term. You can execute operations and to be able to execute these operations on Lean terms, we live inside of this monad called tactic M. So all, uh, yeah, let, let's me show, uh, I, I think I can show you, uh, let's me, uh, let's do, he writes, uh, later uh, today, we're going to see uh, a tactics called he writes. And the cool thing about this automation, it's inside of the static monads here. Uh, uh, this is the type of the he writes static, would be the type of the rewrite static. And you see that it, this is lean codes, right? The tactics, all the tactics we have in lean are written in lean itself, right? Uh, let's see if, uh, let's see, uh, the raffle one is, the raffle one is so simple, I, I can show, but it's so simple, it's, it's basically just a macro, but I, I can show where it's defined. Uh, basically, the raffle tactic we've seen before is just a macro that executes this more primitive tactic called raffle, right? Uh, but you, everything's implemented in me, uh, but the statics, you should view them as meta programs, right? And they are all in the static monads. We have also uh, all infrastructure for converting the strings into lean terms is also a lean program, and they also have a type. Uh, but, but yeah, so, so, sorry, I, I sometimes don't see what's in the chat because my screen is full, but feel free to interrupt me and, and ask me the questions. Yeah. yeah, so maybe this is too early, but for us, uh, it's very important to extract the executable code. Yeah, I imagine you're going to talk about it later, or it's not actually the scope here. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Lean, you can write your own programs, right? Uh, 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 Lean self is written in Lean. You can uh, you have a main function, and uh, our we have a build system called Lake. You can in the command line you just say Lake builds. It will build and create an executable for you. You can create a shared object that you can that is a Lean extension that you can load or in Lean. But uh, it's very transparent. It's just a command line. Uh, you just uh, uh, use our build system called Lake. It's like it from Lean and Make. It's called Lake because of that. But it will, if your package, Lean package, has a main function, you can configure a Lake to create executable for you. And many and people. You can also extract, like, if I give you, like, for example, uh, we have interactive term prover like K, where you extract the EVM code. So you could, or you, you can extract EVA, you can extract a bytecode program too? Yes, right now is a good question. Right now, uh, we extract C code and we have an interpreter, but our IR, it, it's available, right? It's a data structure in Lean, the intermediate representation that we map. We can, I can even show you emit C, this is the function that emit C is the module that converts our internal intermediate representation into C calls. And we have now a, a, a student, Siddharth Ba, he's converting the IR to LLVM direct, directly, right? Instead of going to C and C to LLVM, he goes direct to LLVM and you can do extra optimizations by doing that. But there are people that want, for example, to generate WebAssembly from our IR, right? And yes, our IR is written in Lean, and you, you can write programs that introspect on it. Uh, let's show you, for example, we have even a probing framework where, for example, here, uh, just to give you an idea on, on what people can do, here it's saying it's run globally, 
uh, trying to get, he imports everything in our code base, in the link code base, and is trying to find every definition that contains a join points. And join points is a, like a basic block. Is he's trying to look for a basic block that takes a function as a parameter. It's like a basic block. You have a, you're looking for functions that have a basic block that take a closure as a parameter and are printing all of them, right? Uh, and you're going to find here all the functions in the intermediate representation that have this property, right? You can literally browse the intermediate representation, navigate, apply your own transformations. Uh, 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 we are currently working on a pass manager, uh, uh, the, the new compiler infrastructure that we are currently working. We will even allow you as a user to add your own compiler passes that you implemented in Lean. Uh, including the compiler and apply your own transformations. Uh, we literally want the Lean framework to be fully extensible. If you want to map to a new uh, backend, you can do it using Lean. You don't need, you, you create a file, you put your extension there and it's working already, right? And the community does that all the time. I mean, uh, if we download Mathlib 4, you're going to see a lot of proof automation there where they are writing link codes with a new proof automation. But with the new infrastructure we have for code generation, we're expecting the same will happen for compiler extensions where people are adding new extensions. For example, a lot of people are excited on being able to map functions in Lean that are manipulating arrays to codes in GPUs, right? That you can process these arrays, you can do map uh, efficiently with a GPU operations like map. Uh, yeah, but feel free to, to ask questions. Uh, I, uh, I'm uh, happy to show, give pointers. And I, I know we have only more uh, extra 10 minutes, uh, but feel free to go to Zulip, we are there. We have also meetings, weekly meetings. If you go to the link for a dev uh, channel, uh, you're going to find their links to our weekly meetings where we do walkthroughs in the compiler, right? So if you're, for example, interested in adding a backend, you can join the compiler meeting. Uh, it happens every week and it will help anybody to add uh, their own backends. Uh, we answer questions about the code base, about questions they may have about the APIs to extend Lean. Same thing for proof automation, same thing for the front end. For example, there is a, a startup called Yatima. Uh, they come to the front end meeting. Uh, some of their employees want to improve, for example, one of the employees improves the, our uh, search. We have this library search. Uh, and he proved the library search, the effectiveness of the library search procedure, where you can, for example, start typing, uh, searching for functions in the code base, and now it's more precise because of the extensions they wrote. And they uh, uh, reach uh, the employee from Yatima, he starts coming to the meetings, he learned the APIs, and he added, he improved the library search, right? It's, it's more effective now. Uh, because of his contributions, and that's the spirit of the project, right? Welcome everybody, come to these meetings. If you want to work on the compiler, come to the compiler meeting. If you want to contribute to MathLib or more proof automation, there is the MathLib uh, meeting where people discuss how to write automation for you. Yeah. Uh, what, what I'm trying to communicate, there are many different ways to get additional information. Uh, uh, but uh, let me try to finish the, the, we have only eight minutes. Let me try to talk a little bit about implicit arguments because they are really important in Lean. Uh, here, writing a function that takes types as parameters like alpha and beta. Uh, as I said, uh, usually people use Greek letters for types parameters. And you see that VS Code is telling you how to input alpha. It's just slash A, A, and beta is slash B, B, 
right? And here uh, you have this small function that he doesn't say. Here you see that there is a linter. Lin has linters. You can add your own linter. This is a contribution of his students. He wrote a linter for printing unused variables. And he's complaining here that, oh, B is an unused variable. This is a warning message saying uh, you can silence it by, dis by disabling this linter. Uh, but here the important thing is that this is a contribution from his students, right? Uh, again, he implemented using the implemented this in Lean using the introspection API. Here we evaluate F, where we are saying the first argument is, an, is a, alpha is a net, beta is a string, and then here I can write notes that A has type alpha. I'm writing one here because I said net. This is type correct because I said the first argument alpha is a net, right? For example, suppose that I put true here, Lin is going to complain saying that true is a Boolean, but a net is expected. And okay, I can fix that by putting a bool there and everything works again, right? Uh, that's why Lin is called dependence type theory, right? The, the type of alpha, the type of A that's alpha depends on a previous argument. That's where the, the term dependent comes from. But this is really verbose, right? Nobody wants to write F, boo, string, true, hello. And sometimes when you are in advanced mathematical concepts, the types can be huge, right? And you can view here, oh, if I wrote true, it's obvious that this argument must be boo, right? Anyway, here's where the, the idea of implicit arguments comes from. In Lean, you can put uh, arguments, instead of using parentheses, you can use curly braces. You are telling Lean that you should infer these arguments automatically for us. Here, what it does is very simple. It knows that you type it's one. Since one has typed net, then he's going to fill alpha with net for us automatically. And that's exactly what happens here, right? And let me show you one cool thing about the info view. Uh, suppose that I ask the type of G1 hello, is going to say that's a net. But one cool thing, if I click, he tells me the type, the value of the implicit arguments, right? If you want to see how, what's, how Lean filled the implicit arguments, alpha and beta, that you didn't type, Right, you can just go there and inspect the info view. Right, it's going to tell you that it's net and string, and the at symbol here is basically is the notation Lean uses to say I want to provide the implicit information explicitly. Right, so I want to provide all this information manually, and. You can also go one step ahead and say, oh, this is really boring to write this alpha beta here. Uh, Link can do that automatically for you also. It's going to add, since you just provide what alpha and beta is, it's going to include, uh, he knows that alpha and beta uh, should be, have sorts. And actually it's going to generate something more general, right? So here I'm saying G both in the same universe, remember that can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. There's no reason in this definition for alpha and beta to be in the same universe U. If you ask the type of H, you're going to see that is Lin uses different universes, U1 and U2. He made the definition more general for you because there was no reason for it to be specific. Uh, another nice feature for people working with implicit arguments is that you can provide the value of implicit arguments. Actually, you can provide the value of any argument using the name of the arguments, right? You can say G alpha, the value of alpha is net, right? And you can also say A is one, right? For functions with many arguments, this is super handy, right? Uh, we're, we're reaching the ends. Let, let me see if I can only show you an example. Uh, 
um, more complex statics, right? It's like in Lean, one big workhorse used by the community is the simplifier, right? For example, here I, I'm saying uh, make sim that gets a list and concatenates the list with the reverse of the list, right? And we want to prove that if I call make sim and reverse the result, this is equal to make sim, right? Uh, is, uh, let me show one example of what this make sim is doing. So that's I have the list one, two, three. You see that the result of make sim is one, two, three. I reverse, it gets you to one and concatenate both, right? And here is just saying that if we reverse the result, and it doesn't make a difference here, right? So if you reverse, you're going to get the same thing. And you can prove that by using the simplifier. The simplifier is very powerful in Lean, is extensible. You notice uh, here one important bit you can tell this, you're proving this term using the simplifier and you can use this attributes to say, use this new term that we proved as a simplification rule in the future, right? And here we have, you're proving this more complex term and it's using this one as a rewriting rule, right? I'm just calling simple without any arguments. And if you ask the proof, Right, so you, you ask Lin uh, to print the proof that was generated by Sim. You're going to see that it, it's using the term that we proved uh, before. Uh, it's using here, you see the reverse makes Sim that we proved here is was used to prove TST, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to finish showing that a, a, a bit of powerful automation. There are many other uh, automations available in Lean, but I want to finish with one. Uh, thanks a lot. I'm happy to answer questions. I don't have any meetings after this talk. I'm happy to answer questions, stay uh, longer if it's useful and provide more links or answer questions. Uh, but thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Maybe just a quick question. How is it related to SS Reflect? Is it uh, similar? No, no. SS Reflect is based. Uh, uh, the, the key idea of SS Reflect in Coq is that uh, you, you, we saw that the raffle tactic is more powerful than it seems, right? Uh, so, one thing you can do uh, in Lean and Coq, you can write a decision procedure. You can prove it's correct. And you can write a term like that. If this function reduces to true, then this proposition here, this uh, logical formula holds. You can prove this term once and for all. Then you can, such, you can write proofs where you just use raffle, right? You, you check if my decision procedure reduces to true, then I prove the goal. SS Reflect is based on this idea. You can have that in me, but the community prefers to create, uh, I think a lot of the automation written in Lean creates proof terms, right? Instead of writing, uh, uh, especially SIMP would be really hard. I mean, SIMP is extensible tactic. You, is, you, have, you, you can add new terms to the SIMP database. Is very extensible. It would be really hard to prove once and for all simp is correct. Mm -hmm. But it's much more feasible for simp to create a, a proof term that the link kernel checks. It's, a, it's this dilemma between when you, you have, uh, uh, you can prove a compiler correct once, that would be the SS reflex approach or you can write that everything that the compiler produces is correct by creating certificates. This is what SIMP is doing. But you have both approaches are supported in the, uh, there are some tactics in Lean that are implemented using both approaches. For instance, if you go in Mathlib, 
you're going to find the ring tactic for ring theory. Ring one is implemented like simp and ring two is using, using reflection like SS reflect. Uh, one cool, both approaches have advantages and disadvantages. Another important thing to, to say, for instance, one uh, disadvantage of SS uh, of reflection is that uh, is great for domains like, for instance, propositional logic. You want to do uh, you, it's easy to write decision procedure there, prove it correct once and for all, right? But for simple. Since it's extensible, it's way harder, right? And it can be applied to anything, literally anything simple, right? For any term. Uh, it's much easier to traverse the term. And one advantage we have, at least in Lean, that in both versions can be written in Lean itself, right? So you don't need to use your camel or C to implement a tactic like simple. Cool. I have uh, two quick questions. Um, first, is uh, numbers like naturals, uh, do they have any limit? Um, like you have maxint in other languages or here it's like a theoretical mathematical uh, integer? Yes. The, the nets here is the mathematical natural numbers. We have UN64, UN32. For, we have machine versions, right? But for reasoning, it's, it's like, if you want to prove properties, it's much easier to use nets, right? You don't care about uh, run semantics. And, and our runtime is very efficient. Uh, there is an overhead if you use natural numbers, but if your natural numbers are small, the overhead is really tiny. Everything is implemented using machine integers, only if they get big we switch to, to a, a more expensive representation. Uh, you pay a, a little bit of extra, uh, but it's way more convenient for reasoning. It's mm -hmm. like, if it's super critical, the performance of something you're doing, you should use uint64 or uint32. But right. it's, it, it's it was less of a performance question and more about like, if I write things, do I need to consider it one way or another? So, all right. That's oh, good. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if you use UN64, your proofs are going to be more complicated. Uh, if you use NATS, the proofs are going to be much simpler. Yeah. All right. And second question, uh, I didn't quite uh, see the, if the proof I'm trying to do is actually wrong and you, the lean cannot prove it because I'm, I'm, I made a mistake in my theorem. Mm -hmm. So how, how does it show up? It, it can you just see it in the info view or? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, in the info view. Uh, for example, suppose I say you simp here. Uh, it's showing that uh, the proof didn't finish yet, right? I mean, uh, you're going to find a red squiggle here. The proof uh, is still not solved. Uh, uh, it's saying there are unsolved goals. If you put the cursor after your last static, you also see the, the, the state of your proof, right? Uh, this mm -hmm. is one kind of mistake someone can do. Someone can write a static that doesn't work, right? I mean, for example, if you try raffle here, uh, 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 the, the, the static fails, right? It's saying that uh, this is a type error when you try to apply the static. But usually failed proofs are going to manifest themselves with these uh, red, red squiggles. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see the info view, what's the state of the proof, what's the problem. Uh, All right, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, there are some uh, questions in the chat as well. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, the natural numbers. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can jump. Uh, one cool thing, you can jump to definition of everything. I mean, suppose that you have, a, you want to know, oh, how the natural numbers are defined. You can click and say, go to definition, go to the definition of the natural numbers. And here's the definition. It's an inductive data type. It has a zero. One constructor is zero. And then another constructor is successor. Right, that's uh, the success of natural number is also a natural number, 
right? Basically, natural numbers are inductive data types. Uh, I, I think uh, all systems based on dependence type theory, natural numbers are uh, represented as inductive data type. Uh, we have some additional information explaining to the user uh, how to do proofs by induction, the basics, right? On how to manipulate natural numbers in the doc string. This, all this information is available when you hover over the type net. You're going to see many examples uh, uh, tells about this uh, representation in the runtime, how they are represented in our runtime. Yeah, but they are defined as inductive data type. Uh, it seems that proof of is fairly powerful. It's easy to introduce a soundness to. Okay, yes, someone can write a uh, proof automation that is on sound. What is going to happen is that's our kernel. Uh, remember this, uh, let's go back to the 22. Here, the syntactic created a certificate, right? When I print the, what was sent to the link kernel, this is the term that was sent to the link kernel. This is a certificate for the proof. And this is type checked in our kernel. If someone writes a buggy tactic, what will happen is that the kernel will reject the proof created by the tactic. And in this way, this is super useful because people can really be adventurous, right? They can really hack without fear of introducing unsoundness. For example, at UW, uh, they created a SQL server uh, equivalence checker. Uh, basically, you would write two SQL queries, and they would create a theorem saying the SQL queries are equivalent, and they, they wrote automation for proving that uh, they were equivalent, right? And they, didn't, they use a bunch of heuristics, right? But at the end, they didn't care. At the end, the kernel was checking if the proof was correct or not. And they caught bugs in their heuristics by using this approach. They keep polishing the automation till it was producing the right answer every single time. And so you can really hack, you can really be try new things that you are not really confident if they are sound or not, because at the end, everything is checked by the, the kernel. And the, it's not just, we can also export the proofs and check with independent kernels, right? The community implemented kernels using Rust, Haskell, Scala, and so on, right? There are many different kernels and the kernels are small programs and it's feasible to implement your own kernel, right? It's not like, it's people that have implemented, they took between one week and one month to write their own kernels, depending how familiar with Lean they were. Um, yeah, but yes, the, the answer for the question is yes, Lean is resilient to this kind of uh, mistake. And we really care about that because this gives a lot of flexibility to users, right? They can try new ideas, they can try heuristics, they, they may try things that are right 99% of the time, but there are corner cases that are broken they don't need to care, the kernel will catch this kind of mistake. Uh, there was a question here about model theory. I, I don't think so, uh, but always worth checking. I, I don't know everything that's in Netflix. Uh, it might have model theory, I don't think so. Uh, I don't remember people talking about model theory but it's worth checking on Mathlib. Uh, oh, and actually, yeah, actually we can even check here. They, they have a really nice, uh, let's see, uh, zoom in. Oh, oops, okay. Sorry. Uh, let me minimize this screen. Let me try to move my browser here. If we go to lean proof of let's see. Let's see. 
Oh, there is some other theory. First of all, this shows us, yeah, there's a little bit, right? Uh, yes, but uh, it's fully browsable. The library is fully browsable in the browser. You, the same way you can inspect things in, in VS Code, you can also use the infrastructure the community builds to, to browse the library. So one question is, um, so I just saw there's a geometry uh, support as well. Uh, do you know if uh, people are using uh, like reasoning in reals for these kinds of like things like geometry or are they uh, trying to use float or anything like that as well? Or does Lean oh, support that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, I think the most, okay. the, the most mature they use real numbers. I, I, I haven't seen them using floats at all. Yeah. Okay. But there are some people that are trying to connect with computer algebra systems, with visualization tools, mm -hmm. that they use floats. Uh, uh, if we go to the Lizlip channel, uh, I, I think there's a lot uh, of new stuff happening there. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so I just saw that's Okay, let's see the Okay, here a cool thing. This is in the info view. This is an extension that Thomas wrote. And for sure he's coming. This is this is inside of the info view. I just tell you that, but uh in Lean you can write your own visualization of your Lean objects and see then on the info view, right? This is one thing that is just wow. new that was implemented. Uh, and he's, he's saying he has side link examples. This is a repository. The link is there. He has other examples here. Mm. Another big proof that was recently completed was the sphere reversion. Well, it was a big project, the mathematician, uh, because uh, the, People were concerned whether people could do differential geometry with a proof assistance. And the whole project, point of the project is to show that it's feasible. And they just finished the sphere reversion project. Uh, you can find information on Zulip too. Uh, but there are many visualizations. I think, uh, Thomas, if you see the messages he sends, there, there are many cool ones. Uh, yeah, that's too many messages to find out, but uh, yes, you're going to find many visualizations that are created automatically. I uh, see. With Lean. And again, it's in the info view, right? Uh, people create visualizations for showing commutative diagrams. Also, mm -hmm. you can see a commutative diagram in the info view. It's like you have a bunch of propositions stating uh, facts about commutative diagrams, and you can visualize them in the info view. And you can define your own visualization too. It is that basically in your link file, you show in JavaScript how to visualize, you show, you map link to JavaScript that creates a, prints a visualization and you can see the info view it's being executed. Cool. Thanks. Um, a quick question about the simplifier. If you can extend the simplifier uh, with new lemmas, what will happen if you put a lemma like commutativity in the simplifier? Will it choke and die or will it be able to tell me you did something bad? Yes, this is a good question. I mean, the community has implemented linters for the simplifier to catch mm -hmm. things like that, like mm -hmm. uh, creating loops. The simplifier has uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, it, it will prevent, it, it will terminate, like it, it, there's a threshold on the amount of resources the simplifier can use. And so mm -hmm. it has always this, this, this like last resort is going to say, I gave up, I exhausted my resources. Mm -hmm. We have this feature, but the community has linters for the simplifier for analyzing simplification rules you are adding. Mm -hmm. Creating bad simplification, adding bad simpli simplification mm. rules. So, so it's like a, let's find the normal form for the simplifier and use that normal form when the simplifier works. It has like an order in which it works always with very nice, or it just tries stuff until it manages to get to a 
How does it decide which order to apply the rewrite? Maybe that's the question I want to answer. Oh, the understand. order is going to apply the rewrites? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 the simplifier is going to apply. I mean, when you mark something as a simplification rule, by default, it's, it's, he, he writes the left hand side to the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Um, okay, thank you. And if, if the right hand side, one important thing is if the right hand side is a permutation of the left hand side. Is like commutativity, for example. You're saying that's A plus B equals B plus A. You, you may think, oh, this is going to loop if I use, but mm -hmm. then use a term ordering to break to, to make sure that this kind of simplification rule is well behaved. Oh, I see. Do you think it's possible to do something with uh, like these uh, equality saturation uh, based rewrite systems as like the back end for? How the simplifier works, so then you probably you don't have to rely on the termination and confluence of the rewrite system itself. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Uh, the, the the problem is the scale of simp, right? I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the mathlib has more than twenty thousand simp lemmas theorems, right? That's applied yeah. automatically. It's huge, right? Uh, I see. Yeah, that's a lot of rules. That, that people, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but uh, there are people working on hammers, right? But it's a challenge, right? Uh, people try to interface with provers like Vampire, E, but uh, they are for first order logic, links based on dependence type theories, theory, and it's a challenge. Uh, the gap is really big. Uh, I think people have been trying to connect Coq, Lean, and other proof assistants to, to, to first order term provers, uh, but none of the connections ha have been successful. But right now we are collaborating with the CVC5 team to, co to connect CVC5 to Lean. That's one thing that we're excited about. Uh, but it's still, it's very challenging. Uh, yeah. Cool, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, uh, thank you, Leo, so much for the amazing talk. It was super, super informative. Oh, thanks so much for the invitation. It was, was awesome to be here. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.